Hello everyone and welcome back to another NavTech tutorial. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at formulas and functions, basic and advanced, inside of Apple Numbers. So for this video, I'm going to be using the latest version of the software, so version 4.3, but this works with any previous versions that have been released. All right, so as you can see here, I have opened up numbers. So let's start by opening a blank file. So instead of choosing a template as we usually would do, we're just gonna choose a blank basic table. All right, so now that we have our table, we can start learning about the different formulas and functions we can use in Apple Numbers. All right, so you can create formula or function cells that automatically perform calculations using the data in any cells you select. Now, what does this mean? For example, if I enter a formula or a function inside this cell, B2, uh, obviously, whenever you begin a formula or a function, you must enter the equal sign before it. So if I'm typing inside of the cell and I enter equal sign, as you can see, I have this pop-up here, uh, which lets me know that you are entering, in fact, a formula or a function. Now, since I have not entered anything yet, uh, and the computer knows I should enter a formula, I get this error here. But uh, once we start entering uh, a formula or a function, the error will be gone. So let's try a very basic calculation uh, formula. So let's select a cell here, add a plus sign, and select the cell right next to it. So as you can see, the cell B2 is supposed to represent a sum of the cells D2 and E2. This is a basic sum formula. So if I click the check mark here, there's no data here. It's zero since these are empty cells. But if I enter some basic numerical values here, as you can see, the sum is applied. And since uh, cells automatically perform calculations using the data in these two cells we've selected, so uh, we can change the values inside of those cells to say six and 10. And the result uh, in this cell B2 will reflect the change inside of these two cells. So obviously what we've learned is that the result of a formula or function always appears in the cell where we entered it. So we entered our formula or function B2 and we got the result inside of that cell. Now we can also use any of the predefined mathematical functions included with numbers to speed up our process. So if I select another cell, uh, here, for instance, uh, enter my equal to get this formula pop up. Uh, I can see that on the right hand side here in this sidebar, I have some predefined uh, mathematical functions that I can use. So I could look, look them up by category uh, or just see the recents I've used. So as you can see, I have used multiple mathematical functions included with numbers such as average. Now average uh, is great if you don't want to select every single cell containing values that you want to average out and then divide them by the number of cells. You could just select the average uh, function here. This is a function and not a formula uh, and select two or more cells uh, containing the data and then hit check and you get the average of those two specific cells. So instead of doing six plus 10 divided by two, I just selected this predefined mathematical function called average and got the average of those two cells. This is not programming, but it's like a very basic version of it, which is why uh, they're called formulas and functions. So there are multiple other uh, math ma mathematical functions that are included with numbers. I won't go through all of them since there is, as you can see, a very extensive list but uh, they're always there uh, in case you need them. And what's great about numbers is that when I select one of the predefined options here, I get not a definition, but an explanation of what that function actually does and with examples. So if you don't necessarily understand what a function is, you can look at some examples and get an idea of what it would do with uh, numerical values that you used it with. So again, uh, these are very uh, specific uh, case use based. So uh, if I would need to create an average, I, would, I could search up average and get multiple types of averages that numbers has, uh, depending on my situation. Now, according to Apple, there are over 250 functions for applications, including statistics, engineering, and finance, some of which even retrieve information from the internet. So there are a bunch of these predefined functions you can use. Now let's look at the more practical side of things. Uh, so one nice feature of numbers is that when I select multiple uh, numbers or multiple data cells, I can get predefined functions to show up on the bottom here without even entering them. So 
by selecting just these two data cells, numbers automatically uses multiple common uh, functions or formulas and shows me the results they would give. So as you can see, we have a sum, an average, a minimum, a maximum, and more. And so what's great about that is that if we have a lot of numerical values and we just want to get an idea and not necessarily type in or show uh, the result of a formula, we can just select the data and get uh, the formula and get an idea of what it is on the bottom right here. Uh, furthermore, uh, you can quickly sum or average or count a range of cells by selecting the cells. So here, uh, 6 and 10. So these are the cells we want to include in our formulas. And then instead of um, going to the cell where we want to display the result, typing equal and selecting all of that. All we have to do is go to the plus icon right here in the insert tab and then choose one of the predefined formulas, the most common, select sum for instance. And as you can see, numbers will insert uh, a formula containing the sum of these two cells in uh, the nearby cell. So now F2 is pretty much E2 plus, e, uh, plus D2. So if you look at that, as you can see, it's a sum of D2 and E2. All right, another thing we can do with these formulas and functions is comparing values. So let's go ahead and input two other values for an example, 12 and 14. Now we want to compare these two cells and there are multiple ways to do it. We're gonna go with the most basic and common situations, which are, are these numbers uh, equal to one another? Is one greater than the other or is one lesser than the other. And to do that, we are first going to click the cell where we want the comparison result to appear. So in this case, uh, we chose F4. So in F4, we want to know uh, whether these uh, cells D4 and E4 are equal, for instance. So to do that, we're going to click this cell, um, this cell, click on the equal to get this formula pop up here. And once we do that, we get the formula editor we talked about before. Inside of this, we are going to click a cell whose value we want to compare. So in this case, we're gonna start with D4 right here. Then we're gonna type what is called a comparison operator. So in this case, it's either equal, greater than, lesser than, or um, another step we could take is greater than or equal, lesser than or equal. So these are uh, different types of operators, comparison operators we can have. So we said we were going to see if they were equal, so let's start with the equal sign, select the other, and hit check. So as you can see, this is not a numerical value result, it's a true or false one or zero in programming. So we get a false indicating that D4 and E4 are in fact not equal. However, if I change this comparison operator to say greater than, we see that uh, the the value here reflects the fact that we have changed the operator. So if I go with lesser than, it tells me that it is true since uh, the cells we've selected in, in the particular order we've entered them, this is important, are lesser than. So D4 is lesser than E4. All right, so we've pretty much seen all of the basics and some advanced features of calculations and numbers. So uh, whether it be comparisons, calculations, such as sums, averages, and more, these are really what you need to know to start working with different values and numbers inside of numbers. Now, another thing you can do, uh, which is a bit more advanced, is add equations with math type. Now, I can do that right now since I don't have math type installed. As you can see, if I go to insert math type equation, it's sort of grayed out because I don't have math type installed. But if you do have math type 6.7D or later installed, you can use it to include mathematical expressions and equations inside of your spreadsheet directly. So if you have it installed, all you have to do is go to insert and then math type equation here. And then inside um, the, the pop-up window, you'll, you can type or paste uh, your equation in the field that pops up. Uh, this is great if you want to have a sort of more mathematical point of view to yourself. Uh, but again, you have to have the software installed. Uh, other more advanced features are arguments and values. These are more related to programming. So if you have an idea, a general idea of what programming is and how to use it, uh, these, these will come naturally to you. These are pretty much arrays and array functions, Boolean expressions and value types. So as we did here with the true or false, uh, where we compared two cells uh, in programming, it would be one and zero, for instance. 
So it would reference to a cell containing or resulting in a logical true or false value, but in a Boolean value, what we call a Boolean value. Uh, other things we have are constant expressions or condition expressions, uh, which uh, also can be used in numbers, date and time value types, uh, list value types. So different uh, sort of programming based formulas and functions that can be made directly into numbers without leaving the software. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, be sure to give it a like. It really helps us out. If you want to stay in the know whenever we release a new video, make sure to subscribe. It also helps us out. And it lets you know whenever we release a new video, whether it be a Mac tutorial like this one or tutorials for other devices, Apple devices and uh, computers. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. We will respond. And if you have any video suggestions, make sure to leave them as well. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.